everyone. So in this session, we will talk about the life cycle of plasmodium. So plasmodium is the causative agent for malaria, right? And now uh, plasmodium will have uh, different types of species. You have plasmodium vivax, ovale, falciparum, and who is the vector? You have female Anaphilus mosquito. So in mosquito, especially female, and the species is Anaphilus uh, species. So this causes and this acts as a vector for uh, causing malaria, right? And now this uh, plasmodium is a digenic parasite. So digenic parasite meaning uh, this parasite spends half of its life cycle in mosquito and the other half of its life cycle in humans. So in humans are like secondary uh, vector, like secondary people. You have to, you, you call it as secondary host, which means that these mosquito will mature they will release their spores in the mosquito. Uh, these plasmodium will release their spores in the mosquito, and these spores. So that is the initial form of the life cycle. And now these spores will be transmitted to humans. Clear? So to humans. So that's why humans are called as secondary host. So the primary host is mosquito. And now uh, you have three phases in the plasmodium life cycle. So schizogony, gamogony and sporogony and now hope this um, flowchart is uh, pretty much clear for you all. So you just keenly observe when I start teaching you because it has many stages and many division but it's really interesting you do not uh, worry about all these stages. I will make sure that it is much easy and clear for you. So first, now there is a female Anaphilus mosquito. It will go feed on humans. So as it's feed on humans, the the um, plasmodium, right, which is present in onto the salivary glands of the female Anaphilus mosquito, it will start uh, gurgitating <coughs> onto the blood, right? And now what happens in the blood? You have sporozoids. Now I'm not going to explain you what is a sporozoid stage because as we end with the life cycle, it ends with the sporozoid. So that time you will tell me like what exactly is a sporozoid stage. So now just for time being, you note it down like sporozoid stage. Female anaphilus mosquito will liberate uh, the sporozoid stage into the bloodstream of humans. And now this sporozoid, it will start circulating in the human circulatory system for a certain period of time. And after which it locates the hepatic cells. Hepatic cells are the liver cells. And the liver cells are called as hepatocytes. So they will go settle onto the liver cells. And now onto the liver cells, you have the asexual reproduction happening now this as a result of asexual reproduction these sporozoids they tend to become merozoids the first was a sporozoid and sporozoid after the binary after the fission reaction a sporulation they form merozoid and now these merozoids will enter the red blood corpuscles. Again, they will enter the circulatory system. So just for the purpose of reproduction, they will settle in the hepatic cells. And now these RBCs, when they enter the RBCs, these merozoids, they will become mature. Because uh, the second stage of a merozoid, where they grow a little, and that is called as tropozoid. The first was sporozoid and then it was merozoid and third it was tropozoid. Now these tropozoids, they, ha they have a contractile vacuole and these vacuoles they start moving towards one pole of the cell and it looks like a ring which you wear and that's why it is called as signet ring stage, right? Be that's how the cell looks like. And now these tropozoid will undergo division and they form schizont. And now this schizont will again undergo division and they are called as merozoids. Now first is sporozoid, merozoid, tropozoid, 
sky zone and again mirror's void. Now these mirror's voids are infectious stage where they start liberating toxins onto the RBC cells. And now these toxins are called as hemozoid. And few of them, they, as they start liberating the toxins, the other mirozoid will liberate two cells. One is a male gamete and the other is the female gamete. The male gamete is called as microgamete and the female gamete is called as macrogamete. Now these gametes are there in the circulatory system ready to enter the mosquito. Now when another mosquito they start feeding onto the skin, when they start sucking the blood, these macrogametes and the microgamete they will enter in the mosquito and now in the gut of mosquito these gametes will fuse reproduction happens these haploid gametes produce diploid oocinid these oocinid they mature to form oocyte right and now these oocytes will undergo haploid division, reduction division, that is the meiotic division and they form sporozoid. And now these sporozoids are settled in the salivary glands of mosquito. Now these sporozoids are ready for, ready to enter into humans. Clear? And now that's how the life cycle continues. So you have endoerythrocytic cycle and exoerythrocytic cycle. So now there is a very detailed explanation of the life cycle of plasmodium and then we just have the gist of two other diseases, fungal diseases and helminthic diseases. So now when you are like really young, uh, when doctors say you have had ring worm infection, so obviously people might uh, misconcept as it is a type of worm, but they are not worms, they are all fungi. So these fungi are present on the soil and now when uh, people, when they start wearing clothes without washing uh, and also onto the comb, so that's how these fungal spread from uh, one particular uh, thing to the human. And now in humans, they affect skin, they have red patch structures, you have sore skin, right? So you have to always maintain your personal hygiene. So now these ringworms, they affect the pubic organs also. Now, when ringworm infection is caused onto the feet, you call it as athlete's foot. So that's how it is called, but same ringworm infection. Next, we'll talk about Helminthic diseases. Helminths are nothing but the worms. So first is Ascaris. We have Ascaris lumbricoids, which is the ring worm. So now they are they are usually present in the soil. The spore stages are present in the soil. So when children they are in contact with these unhygienic soil, like usually they are present hygiene or unhygiene, they are all present in the soil. When these children they touch the soil and they are onto the contact with the mouth, and these spores they spread from soil into the children's mouth right and now what happens when they spread into the mouth they affect the gut region and there is a multiplication of these four stages and ringworm infection i mean uh, the ascaris lumbricoid uh, infection starts so now what how exactly they start is that they for uh, these pores will start liberating the male ascaris and the female ascaris and again they have these uh, anal and rectal itching so that's how uh, uh, these worms do uh, generate themselves and then filariasis. So in filariasis is caused by Uchiridia bancrofti and this is more uh, creepier and scarier than the Ascaris because they are all huge huge worms, they are all dimorphic worms and they affect the lymphatic system that is they block the blood circulation and that's how the organ become enlarged. It could be scrotal sacs and memory gland in females so that's how the organ becomes enlarged. So uh, this diseases, so the lymphatic system filariasis, even this is present in the soil and when you walk with bare foot. So that's why you should never walk with bare foot. So it is all because of uh, people catch up all these helminthic worm infections. So in this session we spoke about uh, the life cycle of plasmodium, fungal diseases and helminthic diseases.